As Kay's just told me that uh, Wellington Road, the village road, is going to be closed on Tuesday to Thursday, um, probably from where we are, or all the way to the Ford, uh, to the 49. So if you do come to the Premier on Wednesday, or if you're helping for the uh, alternative Halloween on the Tuesday, uh, then be warned that we might not be able to have access from here to the 49. So do I think that. Nine to five in the morning. So okay, so it might be okay in the evenings. Um, but those of you who maybe have to have a couple of days off work if you can't get out of <laughs> just put, putting it out there. Um, do also remember, as I said, prayer meeting on Tuesday, on Wednesday, alternative Halloween on Wednesday, on Tuesday, sorry. Um, and then in a couple of weeks' time, we've got a fellowship lunch. Uh, so do sign the uh, thing on the back wall outside in the lobby area um, if you'd like to come along to that. Let's just um, pray now before we start our service. Father, once again, we, we do thank you for this time that we can spend at the end of this day. We thank you for this morning and what we were able to learn and enjoy, the fellowship we are able to share at the beginning of this day. And now as we do the same at the end of this day, Father, we pray that uh, again you will be here amongst us, even though there are a few of us, but that we'll enjoy having company and fellowship together and enjoy your presence as well. So be with us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Just want to start by reading a psalm. Um, it probably picks up something of what we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be thinking about peace uh, tonight. Peace, something that uh, I think we'll all agree is rather lacking um, in the world that we are living in. But Psalm 122 asks us to pray for a specific thing, which we all do in a moment. Um, but it's just for that word peace. So Psalm 122 goes like this. I was glad when they said to me, let us go up to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls, and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. I think it is important to pray for the situation in Jerusalem, pray for the situation in Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria, all around that area, really. It's, if there isn't unrest, it's potential to be a lot of unrest in that area. So this psalm does ask us to pray for peace, um, and we will do that, and pray for peace in other parts of the world where wars, strifes, difficulties uh, are around. It just seems to be every day you turn the news on, there seems to be something else happening. Had that sad situation in Maine in the US a couple of days ago with, I think it was 18 people killed and numerous injured after that man decided to go shooting people. So we can remember those that lost loved ones in that situation as well. So let's just bow our hearts and our heads and pray. Our oh, Father in heaven, we are so aware that we live in a world which is massively different to Genesis 1. That world that at the end, after all the creation, you said it was very good. And Father, we look out on this world as we see it now. And even in our warped eyes it appears far from very good. So, Father, firstly, we would ask for forgiveness because we know that the reason the world is like it is is simply down to sin. And we are no better than the other person. We are no better than Adam and Eve, originally the first sinners, because we have to confess we would have done the same. We do the same every day. We put other things before you. We listen to other voices rather than your voice. So, Father, we would pray for forgiveness this evening, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that you will clothe us with the glorious righteousness of Jesus Christ. But, Father, there are things happening in the world, particularly at this time, which does cause us concern, cause us pain, cause us worry, so we would bring those before you this evening. 
Top of the list, maybe, for us is the situation in Gaza and in Israel, Lebanon and all around that area. Father, there is much loss of life that has taken place. There are many lives that have been broken and shattered that will never be the same again. Many people who are significantly hurting, whether from the Gaza and Palestinian side or from the Israel side. Father, as we thought of with the young children, we are all made in the image of God. We are all human beings. So, Father, we weep with those that weep and we mourn with those that mourn. And we especially pray for your people in that area. Father, that you would be to them everything that they need at this time. Whether it is the joy of having news that their loved ones are safe and secure, whether it is that arm of comfort around them, as they mourn or are still worried about where they could possibly be. Father, be with them, we pray. For us here, a safe distance from the situation, we pray that you would give us wisdom to know how to pray and what to pray for. Because sometimes in these situations we hear news from different sides and different websites and we just don't know what is truth and what is fiction. We don't know what is the right things and what is lies. So, Father, we pray that you would give us wisdom to know how and what to pray. And may those prayers be in accordance with your will and your purpose. As we pray for Jerusalem and Israel and Gaza, we would pray for other areas of the world which are struggling with war, rumours of war, strife, hardship. Father, they are known to us day by day, week by week. So, again, we just lift up your people in those areas whether they are bringing humanitarian aid to those areas, whether they are suffering themselves. Father, these are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and it is right that we pray for them. Pray not that they'll be taken out of that situation, but that they will be faithful in those situations. And if it is your will that they should be kept safe and secure, then please, your will be done. But if it is that they should be taken away from the situation, maybe even to take into glory, And Father, we know that it is better for them by far that they are now in heaven. So Father, be with them, those people we pray. We think of the situation in America in Maine as well. It doesn't seem many months ago we had other mass killings in that country. Father, we don't know the, the ins and outs of the policies and the politicalness that goes on in that area, but we just again see lives lost, families destroyed. Husbands distraught, wives distraught, children without parents. And Father, we just put ourselves in that situation, how horrified and how hurt and distressed we would be. So we can only imagine the pain and anguish that these people are going through. So we pray for your church in that area. Father, that they may again be all that is required at that place. May they be able to be the, the social needs that are required. May they be the the emotional need that's required, but Father, above all that, may there be the spiritual need that is required. That even though lives have been lost in some amazing way, lives that are still on this earth may actually be saved through finding faith in Jesus Christ. Father, we live in a broken, sad world, so different to what it was when you were originally created. But Father, the only thing that gives us joy is knowing that one day, one day all things will be made new. One day there'll be no more pain, no more crying, no more distress, no more anger, no more hatred. One day, when you come again or we're called to be with you, Father, until that day, use us continually, we pray, and we keep one eye on the future and one eye on now. Help us in this, we pray in your name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a great hymn to start with, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. We'll stand and sing together.
sorry, Cash, we'll go for the reading next, if that's okay. So we're going to read Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 26. Galatians 5, 16 to 26. And God's word says these things. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And that those that belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Well, before we look at that passage, we're going to sing our next hymn, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, greatest treasure of my longing soul. My God, like you, there is no other. True delight is found in you alone.
let's just pray before we come to this passage. Oh Lord, we thank you for the words that we have just sung, that you are indeed our rock and our redeemer, the greatest treasure of our longing hearts. Father, there are so many treasures that this world wants to offer us, treasures of money, possessions, wealth, treasures of fame. Father, we know none of those bring us anything that's any good. We want our treasure to be in you. So, Father, help us to have our priorities in the right place. Help us to see what is real and helpful and true and put aside those things which are just going to be of no eternal good to us. Father, as we look at your word now and consider peace and what peace really means, Father, may it be a great blessing to us this evening as we look at just this one word. Help us to ask it in your name. Amen. So, I want to ask you a question to start with. How would you write a letter? If you're writing a letter to someone, how would you start the writing of that letter? Maybe that makes me sound old. So we'll say, how would you send a text? Or how would you send a message or anything like that? How would you start that message? I expect most of it's straight to the point, maybe not even a hi, hello, or anything like that. It's just bang straight in. And yet in the New Testament... Out of the 27 books that are in the New Testament, these are the ones that in the first couple of verses start with the word peace. Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 2 John, Jude, Revelation. The vast majority of the books in the New Testament, start in the first few verses with the word peace. And nearly every single one of those books, when it has peace in that verse, links it with the words grace and mercy. And it made me think and realise that actually, if we want to have peace, we have to understand grace and mercy. And if we want to have grace and mercy, that will give us peace. That's something that I think these writers are wanting to get across, that the three words cannot really be in separated out. They all come together. Grace, mercy and peace. So for the next few moments this evening, we're going to look at peace and more importantly, peace with God. But we have to start and ask the question, what's the world's view of peace? Because after all, I think we can always say that everybody really wants peace to have peace. It's it's our desire in our heart to want peace. It's what we want, isn't it? So parents will say, oh, I just want a little bit of peace and quiet. That's the cry out of most parents. You'll get there, don't worry, Sean, you'll get there. That that time when you just sit down, maybe you put the kids to bed and it's just quiet and you just sit down and you have that sigh of, oh, just that, that peace, that quiet, that tranquility. It's just so nice. And yet, We know within seconds they'll be crying upstairs or the phone will ring or something will happen and that peace will be completely disturbed. See, I think generally people all over the world just want to have some peace. They want lasting peace. They want peace that means something. It's just very sad that the majority of this world don't really know where to go to look for that true, lasting peace. Let's look at some of the areas they do go to. So riches is one of the areas that people think, oh, if only I was rich, I didn't have all this debt problem, I would have peace. And we get millions upon millions of people playing the National Lottery every week, I think it is now, is it? Or twice a week, I've no clue what it is now. And other lotteries that take place as well, thinking, if I just won that multi-million pound amount of money, I would know what peace was really like. And yet that more often than not, when you read the stories of these people, they've found friends that they never knew they had and they've lost family which were important to them. It never actually brings them true peace at all. In fact, it probably brings them completely the opposite. One of the biggest problems, there's two biggest problems I think that in this world at the moment. One is this AI situation which really does concern me a lot. 
And the other is gambling. I think gambling is one of the biggest issues we have, certainly in this country. It's just taken over everything. You go to sporting events and sport is just infested with gambling all over. You just see it advertised everywhere, it's sponsored everywhere. There was a time when I was younger when it used to be cigarettes. It was cigarettes everywhere in sporting activity. They were the main sponsors and always had something to do with it. And once that was got rid of, gambling seems to have taken a hold on all that. But we don't like to use that word gambling anymore. If you notice on the adverts, it's not classed as gambling anymore. It's classed as fun or gaming, as they like to say. So now you have this thing, when the fun stops, stop, is their slogan. We're not talking about fun. We are talking about gambling and making your situation very uncomfortable and difficult. Gambling is not fun. It's not entertainment. It is not a game. And yet it's portrayed to be that way. To give them the idea of it's going to give you peace. You're going to enjoy this sudden infestation of money that you're going to be enjoying, or this community that you'll be involved in. It's going to bring you peace and happiness. And yet we know it's such a bad addiction. Many homes, many families have been broken up and destroyed from being linked to gambling. Country living. We all live in a beautiful area of the world, don't we, really? I mean, we, we shouldn't be sort of moaning about country living, but how many people do you think, oh, if I just lived in the country, or if I lived by the beach, just have that nice open space environment? Isn't that what happened during COVID? We had an, an influx of people to come to the, the country areas from the cities because they wanted to have that space. But I think it's also true that, you know, you try and run away from the, the, the cities into the countries and all that happens is your problems just follow you in the same direction. It doesn't actually bring you peace at all. You may lose the odd problem, but you gain a few more. It's not lasting peace. Good health. Does good health bring you peace? It's something we all like to have, isn't it? We all like to have good health. None of us like being ill, but I think it's just the way it's going to go, isn't it? Eventually, we're just going to get older and things become weaker and, and the frailty kicks in. The health doesn't last like it used to and it takes longer to recover from situations than it used to before. And you have that groan and that ouch as you get out of bed in the morning as, as everything just is, needs to be released and got rid of the stiffness. Good health doesn't really bring you peace because it's just going to go after a while. So I don't think it matters where you look in the world, whatever situation you are in, there is no lasting peace that is man-made or can be man-given. And when we look at the world, we can certainly see there is a world that has no idea what true peace is. We have got wars all over the place at the moment. We've got financial problems all over the place. We've got people worried about mortgage rates, people worried about interest rates, the costs of living, the situation regarding food banks and, and all that's involved around that. And then after we get rid of the wars, after we get rid of the problem of a cost of living, then something like COVID comes along and we don't know when the next one could be. That causes people to be wary and anxious and all that happens is there's no peace at all. The believer can go through those things and still have this sense of peace. Still know that in those most difficult times, those hard times, you still can have peace with God and still know that. So we're not saying that the troubles and difficulties and worries go away and it's replaced by peace, but peace helps us get through those difficulties. So we have to remember that the world can knock us as hard as it wants to knock us, but it can't knock us out of the hand of God because we are held so tight. I love the analogy, and it seemed Sean and Charlotte the other day, which made me think of it again, was when you hold a baby for the first time, and you hold them tightly, you hold them against your chest, don't you? You cuddle them and you want to make them secure. And that baby feels secure, it feels safe. It feels at peace when it feels your heart beat and it's next to you. That's how we should feel in the hand of God. That sense that he cannot let us go. We have that peace with him because he's holding us tightly through every single situation. You can see that in some of the people in this place, can't you? It was just so nice to see Eva here this morning. I really didn't expect it. And it took me a little bit by surprise, to be honest with you, when I saw her here this morning. But I was chatting to her afterwards, and she said a couple of things about Norman, and she said a couple of things about the nurses in there and how they're just in awe of him in so many different ways. How they just have tears in their eyes over how Norman reacts to things. 
And I just looked at her and said, just because he's got that peace. He can't explain it, but he just has that peace. And you see it so often with people who are going through trials and difficulties, especially when they're in hospital, that they have this just overwhelming sense of peace no matter what they are going through. And that is the peace of God in their hearts. Nothing the world can give can, t- can, can match that at all. That amazing peace that they can have. See, normally the world would give them the answer of anger and sadness, but they have this amazing sense of peace. When life seems just too much, when we're difficult to understand what is going on, we need to understand that our Saviour loves us and he wraps his comforting arms around us and gives you a peace that we cannot explain and that world just cannot match in any way. But I just want to add one last thing to it as well, or two things to it. Is we must not think and hold on to this peace for our own benefit. Yes, it does benefit us. I'm not denying that 100 at all. It is vitally important that it benefits us. But just as moaning and complaining and all that sort of stuff is contagious, so once one person starts doing it, it seems to be a contagious thing, and before you know it, everybody's starting to do that. God's peace can be exactly like that as well. If you see someone with God's peace and they're displaying God's peace, it just comes to you as well. And it also comes to non-believers, like we say, with doctors and nurses and maybe it's teachers and other people like that who see it in people. They just think, yeah, I can see there's something different about that person. They just have this sense of this peace, this contentment about no matter what situation they're in, they just have something that I haven't got. And yes, they've got a saviour, they've been forgiven, but they have just this peace with God that the world cannot explain. True, lasting, fulfilling peace. The world has no idea what it means unless they can see Jesus Christ and understand him. God is the source of peace. And just like his mercy and grace, the closer we are to him, the better we'll understand and appreciate its peace. It's amazing, isn't it? That once we had a God that was full of wrath, full of anger, full of hatred against sin, and therefore us. And now, because we've been adopted into his family, we have a God, that same God, but we can call him our Father. What an amazing privilege. What an amazing sense of peace we can have because we have that assurance that heaven is also waiting for us. So while we're on this earth, Romans 8 tells us, for we know that for those who love God, all things work together for their good, for those that are called according to his purpose. And then once the time has come for us to leave this world and go to heaven, Matthew 25 tells us, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. Peace, true, lasting peace is possible even in this world that just seems to be so negative about it all, but it can only be found in Jesus Christ. So I have one final question. Do you have this peace? It's got to be the question we ask, isn't it? Do you understand this peace? Do you know the giver of this peace? Are you aware of the cost of this peace? If you are, and you do, then enjoy it relish it, treasure it, and share it with as many as you can. If not, then I suggest maybe you start thinking seriously about where I can find this peace with God. I suggest maybe we start with a verse which is repeated so many times during the Christmas period. Isaiah 9 verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, And the government will be on his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's just pray. Father, we're aware that we live in a world and an environment which has no idea of true lasting peace. Father, we thank you that because we have been adopted into the family of God. 
because you have showered grace and mercy upon us. We know this peace with God. So Father, although we benefit from it hugely, we will pray that we may share this peace with others, to show them where this peace comes from, to show them how they can have this peace with God that passes all understanding. Father, we thank you that you are the fountain and author of peace. And we pray that this world which is desperately in need of it, that we may be people who are willing to share and to show how this peace may be obtained, this incredible, amazing peace with God in heaven. Father, we thank you for our God in heaven and his peace, because of his name. Amen. We're going to sing our last hymn together which is a lovely hymn. May the peace of God our Heavenly Father and the grace of Christ the risen Son and the fellowship of God the Spirit keep our hearts and minds within his love. And verse 2 says, May this peace which passes understanding and the grace which makes us what we are and this fellowship of his communion make us one in spirit and in heart. This benediction which has been put to music. Let's stand and sing this together. So, Father, we pray that as we leave this place now, as we go into this world which doesn't understand true, lasting peace, whether that's in our workplaces, whether that's just going around with our neighbours or friends, doing other things during this week, Father, we pray that we will declare the name of the Lamb once slain, Christ eternal, the King of kings, so that they may have this peace which passes all understanding. Help us to fulfil this calling, we pray. But we can only do it with your help. So we ask that you will be with us as we leave this place and during this next week. In our Saviour's name. Amen.